This place is nice. Yeah. We used to take field trips here all the time when we were kids. Learn how to milk cows, how to plant seeds, all that stuff. If we came during the fall, we'd paint pumpkins. Elliot and I actually took horseback riding lessons here when we were eight. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. There was this one horse. Sierra was her name, if I remember correctly. She always gave everyone a hard time. Nothing dangerous, obviously, just not wanting to cooperate. Figure she must have been bored of a bunch of kids tugging on her reins all day. But Elliot, the moment he sat up there, it was like she'd known him her whole life. He sounds wonderful. He was. Do you have a picture of him? I... yeah. Here. And the one in the hockey shirt is Henry, I'm assuming. Yeah. This was right after one of his games senior year of high school. They won. He's wearing your sweatshirt. Well, technically, it's his. He let me keep it, though. I, I haven't really taken it off unless it was for laundry or to sleep. Not since he... <sighs> no, I get it. You all look really happy. I still don't understand it, you know. Understand what? You. Clearly you're on Eric's side. Why bother with me? I'm not on anyone's side. You know as well as I do that he has a tendency to get violent. If he decides that he wants to come after you, I might be the only person who can change his mind. It's not a decision I made lightly. My fiancé and I talked long and hard about it. Weighed all the pros and cons, the risks and benefits. Hold on, you're- mm -hmm. He and I were childhood sweethearts. He proposed not long after I graduated. Can't imagine that went over well with your secret admirer. No, it didn't. And so what? Your fiancé is just okay with you moving six hours away and keeping an eye on someone who's basically a stranger so that your kidnapper doesn't murder him? In short? Yes. We trust the other can hold their own if things do go south. But honestly, I don't think Raul or I have to worry about Eric. So, at the end of the day, you've decided that you're my bodyguard whether I like it or not. It sounds better than friends with benefits. <laughs> now you just sound like Henry. Is that a good thing? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'd love to meet him someday. I'd have to check with him on that. Not sure he'd love the idea of... My connections. Exactly. It's not that he's a bad person or anything, he just... Did... Did you hear that? Hear what? Nothing. Nothing, sorry. Are you okay? I think we both know the answer to that. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Can I ask you something? I have a feeling you're going to find out the answer one way or another, so go for it. What inspired you? What gave you the idea to- To make a person commit arson and drop out of school? A little more blunt than I was going for, but yes. Yeah, no offense, but I'd rather not get into it. <sighs> My mom died. Cancer. I was 17, just a couple days out of high school. We'd always been close, so losing her, it, it was devastating. Not just for me, obviously. My dad, my sister, my brother was five at the time. He didn't even really understand what was happening. That she was gone. That she wouldn't be coming back. Unless she did. Unless she did come back. I'd always had the interest in the subject. I already had theories, but they'd always been just that. Theories, curiosity. Is this the secret to piercing through the veil that separates life and death? Little more than a hypothetical. But after she died, that's when I decided it. That this would be my life's work, that I wouldn't rest until I found a way to see her again. 
but it, it wasn't just for me. It was for everyone, the entire world. Elliot, he lost both of his parents when he was five. What if, what if no other child had to go through that again? Imagine, death not as a finality, but as nothing more than an inconvenience, an, an unfortunate circumstance equal to a car breaking down. Irritating, perhaps a bit stressful, but something that could be fixed, life continuing on as usual before long. That was the vision I had, the future I'd dreamed of. I'd already been accepted at Ingleside, I would have access to everything I needed there. Tools, chemicals, even cadavers. All that was left was the work, the dedication, and the perfect storm. Of course, I couldn't tell anyone what I was doing. They wouldn't have understood. They would have tried to stop me with talk of ethics and the dangers of playing God. That made the entire project difficult, not only having to get into the building undetected every night, but hiding my progress where it wouldn't be discovered. But I managed. You know, I think that was the last time I really ever felt excited about something. That night, thinking that this was the moment that would lead mankind into a new golden age of science. It was like every dream I'd ever had was coming true right before my eyes. I walked into that lab expecting glory. And instead, I ended up like this. I think she'd be proud of you, you know? I'm serious. You've been through a lot, but you keep going no matter how hard it is. You're stronger than you give yourself credit for. I lost my dad when I was 11. We were close too. Honestly, he was all I had. My mom died not long after I was born. We immigrated from Sweden when I was two, and it took everything he had just to keep us on our feet. Not exactly a huge market for violinists these days. But we were happy, even during the hardest times. It was just the two of us against the rest of the world. But then, all at once, there was just me. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how difficult it was. It still is sometimes. Some days everything still reminds me of him. Are you religious, Victor? No. But you believe in something, I assume, given your work? Yeah. Call it whatever you want, a soul or whatever. There's something, I'm just not sure what it is. Or what happens to it after death. Even now, I, I have no idea. It makes sense. Let's look at it from a non-religious angle, then. Whatever that something is that you still can't identify, that you know is there, that soul or sense of being, it existed in her. Would you say it could be considered some sort of energy? I guess. And what's the first law of conservation? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. You see what I'm getting at? Whatever that force is, whatever made her her... It's no stretch of the imagination to say that it's still out there. Maybe in a different form, but even so. I know it's hard, Victor. There are going to be days where it all comes rushing back and you're going to feel like breaking down. You've got to understand, that never really stops. Years from now, you're going to see something that reminds you of her and it's going to hurt, no matter how well you've healed. I wish I could say that eventually you'll just stop missing her, but I can't. But it will get easier. There's one main difference between you and me, I think. You're under the impression that your mom's death means that you're alone. I believe that with my father watching over me, I'll never be alone again. Poetic. I try to be. But it's true. And the same goes for the others, too. We love, we mourn, and in time, no matter how impossible it seems, we accept. All you can do is remember that, and hold on to the friends who are still here. And... are you included in that category? I'd like to be, if you'd let me. I have an idea. Maybe it will be a step in the right direction for you. What's your work schedule look like the next few weeks? Why, what are you thinking? Well, if you're comfortable with it, maybe the two of us could take a trip to... 
Victor? You still with me? We need to leave. What? Why? Is everything okay? Just go now. Victor, what's wrong? Did did you see her? See who? Her, the, the woman on the white horse in the field. The one in the red sweatshirt? I didn't see her face, I- Because she didn't have one. What? Just, just keep driving. This is a long story. <laughs>